What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Have you nerd all about it lately? Oh, yes. Hey, nerdlings. <laughs> hey, nerdlings. There is a fun question floating around in the community. Are you a gamer first or a collector first? Well, first, I heard about this question from Retro Rivals. So I'm going to drop a link in the description below over to their video. Please go check it out and listen to what they have to say. Are they gamers or collectors first? Ladies first, are you a gamer or a collector first? Well, I'm probably a collector first. I'm going to have to agree with you on that. <laughs> Mostly because we don't just collect games. We collect tabletop games. We've got a nice big rack of those. We collect movies, uh, TV shows, DVD, Blu-ray, VHS. It doesn't matter. We've got just a nice eclectic mix of all of that. You collect one or two action figures. I, I've been known to pick up a, an action figure here and there. And you don't stop with just action figures. Nope. You've got, what else? Plushies! I love plushies! I think you've got some cars, some Funko Pops. I do, I love Funko Pops, I love Hot Wheels cars, I love Matchbox cars, I don't care. <laughs> if I like it, I collect it. Even if I don't know what the heck it is, I will collect it. Even in the game room, I mean, the more that you look around in here, you notice that we've got uh, that full Amiibo set going on. So we collect those guys. We collect books, guidebooks, mm -hmm. Nintendo Power, stuff like that. Plus, on the shelves all behind us, there's toys and little things and knickknacks. So, yeah, we're definitely collectors first. But there's some pros and cons to being a collector and a gamer first. Some of the pros to being a collector first are uh, memories. Look, all that nostalgia that's seeping in, you got it everywhere, right there, on your shelves, on your displays. It's right there for you to revisit at a moment's notice. For me, it's more of a, I couldn't get it as a kid, or I couldn't find it as a child, or whatever. So now, as an adult, I have my own money, and I can get it. So now... It's in my collection. It's like a reverse nostalgia thing. It's not a toy you grew up with. It's a toy you wanted growing up, so now you have it. Exactly. <laughs> Another pro is going to be prices. Mm -hmm. Once you got that thing in your collection, if it goes up in value, oh, hey, that's awesome. But now you don't have to pay that premium price for it. Maybe you got it when it was a little lower price. Maybe it's like <laughs> a game on clearance or something, and it's worth hundreds now. And one more pro, how about sharing? Sharing is caring. It, it really is. <laughs> you know, you have someone come over, they're looking through the games. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you have this. I always wanted to play it. I never did. Can I borrow it? Thanks, Buto. No. I don't know him. Never seen him before. Look, he has a gun. It must be him. <laughs> or, uh... Maybe someone has to see that movie you're always mm -hmm. talking about. Another good thing about collecting is if it's gone and you've got it digitally, you have it physically. So if you lose the digital version of it or if the server shut down, you still have the physical medium to it. Now it's not all sunshine and rainbows when collecting, though. There are some cons such as space. The final frontier. Well... That's a lot of junk. And we're about to have no more frontier in this place. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you collect a bunch of stuff or just something more specific. Space always becomes an issue. And of course, another con is prices. Yep. It goes the other way. Maybe you did not pick up that game on clearance and now you're paying that super overinflated premium price. Because, hey... You didn't get Earthbound new in the box, the big box, and now you're paying fifteen hundred. Probably the worst con to collecting is losing focus on collecting to the point that you're not having fun with it. Maybe you start to be a little too dialed in and laser focused on I've got to get this, 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 and this. And you're not really loving what you're collecting, you're just doing it and it's almost work. Yeah, if you're spending too much time out there looking for that video game or that toy, you don't get to be around it enjoying it. So That's if true. you're spending all your time hunting, you don't be you're not gonna be at home 
playing. Wanna play? Well, that is a great segue into some of the pros of being a gamer first. For instance, you play what you have. You don't have like a big collection kind of overshadowing you with its clutches, knowing that you're never going to play all of them. No, you, uh, you play what you have because you're not collecting all of them. You're just playing what you have. And what helps with playing what you have is playing what you want. So you're not out there looking for that lot of games, trying to get a really good deal because there's that one in there, but you need it for your collection and you don't even care if you're actually going to play it because you just go put it on a shelf. No, this is about just playing the game. So you go out there and uh, you can be focused or not. It's like, that's the game I want. That's the game I'm going to play. Come on, man. It's my turn to play. No, it's not. This is my same quarter. I watched you put another quarter in there. And if you are wheeling and dealing to get these games that you're playing, that price point can be pretty comfy. If you're patient, you can get those games for a good price. I love the Assassin's Creed games. I don't buy them day one. I'm not paying $60 for that. We wait for those. Partially because we're back backlogged, but otherwise we like to get them for about 20 bucks a piece. The other nice thing is when you're a gamer and you're not worried about collecting, you trade that stuff in. For the collectors, that's like, oh, no, don't do that. But for the gamers, it's like, uh, I paid $30 for this game. I'm trading it in for 15 that I'm putting towards another $30 game. And the cycle just goes on and on. It's the way to do it. That last thing you mentioned, I actually consider that a con of gaming because I've known a few gamers who played a game, got done with it, turned it in for credit, got another game, but then a few years later, like, oh man, I really liked that game. Then they have to go out and rebuy it. Sometimes it's way more than they paid for it. So that may also be a con of gaming. That's true. And to Which would be a pro to collecting. <laughs> to tie into that, the experiences that you could share while gaming. If you're someone who doesn't care about collecting stuff and keeping things in your collection, you play that game, you beat it, and you send it right out the door. Hey, great, but now you want to show someone this really cool part in this game, or you want them to try it out. You don't have it on hand, and cycling back to you, maybe you have to go and buy it. Again, now you've bought the same game twice. Except this time it's 60, not 30. No! And last, just because you are a gamer first and you're playing all those games doesn't mean you can keep up with all of them. And not all of them you can knock out in a weekend. So trying to keep up even when you're playing them, that can kind of be a con. But if you're collecting them, maybe you can get to them down the line. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe not. Right. It doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on, if you're a gamer first, if you're a collector first. As long as you're having fun with what you're doing, that's really all that matters. You know, games are meant to be played, so play them. And if you just like collecting stuff, collect it. There's nothing wrong with it. Even if it sits on the shelf for a while and you don't get around to playing it. The collection behind us, it doesn't skew towards a monetary value. There's a lot of memories here. There's a mm -hmm. lot of stories here. And we love to share those memories and those stories with the people that come over. We like to watch the light in their eyes when they're going through and they see that game that they forgot all about and they get to revisit it. The way that it brings all of us together. Sometimes we can sit down with some friends and play a game that they never knew that they were missing out on before. And just showing them some of the other things, you know, whether it's a board game, a movie, a comic book, or a toy that they didn't even know existed before, but now they're kind of on the hunt for. There's a lot of fun in that. And honestly, for me, the collection is kind of a trophy of how far I've come in my life. Growing up with not very many games, this speaks a true testament to look what happens when you focus when you work at something and when you make an effort to try to collect this stuff and try to hold on to it. For me, a lot of it stems back to I just couldn't have it as a kid. We didn't have the space, we didn't have the money, we moved around a lot so we didn't want to pack stuff all the time. It's more of a I couldn't have it then so I can have it now. No one is telling me I can't have it, I've got the money for it, so I'm gonna get it. 
Granted, it's usually like a dollar at a flea market, but still. And it just kind of gives me pleasure to just look at it, considering the things I collect are mostly toys and, and plushies. They're not something, you know, I play with necessarily. Oh, I play with the toys. He plays with the toys and I love it. But I just like to look at it. It just brings a smile to my face and makes me feel happy. So that's why I do it. All right. Well, nerdlings, this is a very fun topic to discuss. So please let us know in the comments down below. Are you a gamer first? Are you a collector first? Do you have a reason for either one? Or if you feel like doing a video response, please do. Again, the video that started us off on this, Retro Rivals, link in the description below. But there are plenty of other videos out there being made on this topic. So check them out. See what people have to say. And feel free to drop a link to your video if you do a response in the comments down below. I'm just going to keep saying comments. Comments, comments. Like, comments, <laughs> subscribe, hit the notification bell. Don't forget, you don't have to be one without being the other as well. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's There's a good gray area. There. Yeah. So, like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we have merchandise over there. Go see us on the Retro Refresh because it is a pretty cool looking website. And they have merchandise on Tee Public as well. And if we like it, nerdlings, we nerd it and collect it and play with it and cuddle it because plushies are squishy. OK, I'm glad that's where you're going with it. <laughs> you have to flag this video otherwise. Bye. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I boring you? Yeah. Wait, no, no. Let me finish, finish your tweet. tweet. <laughs> Okay, you ready? I'm just making sure he wasn't licking his penis. <laughs> I just got you licking your penis. Apparently, there's a monster in our game collection. Yes. <laughs> if you're patient, you can get those prices for a good game. <laughs>